Hi students, how are you? I hope you are fine. Keep yourself clean and stay safe, okay? So, before we start the class, do you want to listen to an animal song? Okay, so let's sing along. All on the bus goes moo, moo, moo all day long. All day long. The duck on the bus goes quack, 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 quack. Quack, quack, quack. The duck on the bus goes quack, quack, quack all day long. The chicken on the bus goes click, 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 click. The chicken on the bus goes click, click, click all day long. Yay, that was a fun song, right? So, that was an animal song. So, what are we going to study today? Right, about animals. So, should we start? Welcome to the world of science. Before we start the lesson number two, a quick recap for you. My questions for you are, do we find plants and animals everywhere we go? Yes, we find plants and animals everywhere we go. What is a habitat? Right, a habitat is a place where plants and animals live. Question number three. Where can you find small plants? On the walls, in the cracks of the concrete, on the trunks of a tree. So this was your textbook page number 48 and 49. And the lesson name was plants and animals around the school. So talking about plants and animals around the school, I wanted to share a few pictures from the school. Do you remember this? Yes, this is our school. And especially the boys section level 1 boys, I think you remember this. Because during your pre break area, you are always seen playing around in the in this area, right? Some more pictures for you. Can you see the small plants, grass on the lawn? Right, this is near the fence area. You can see this, right? This also reminds you of break time. I'm sure it does. Wow, some more local trees near the football ground, right? I hope you can just rec recollect all these memories of your school. And I'm sure you're very happy looking at these pictures. Great. So let's, moving, let's move to the lesson number two. And uh, what are we going to learn today? Hmm. Can you guess? Right. Some new town and city animals. So we are going to learn some new animals and birds which live in cities and towns. Question number two. Can animals stay with us? Hmm. Let's find out. Number three. How will they survive in our habitat? That means... How can they say, stay with us in our surroundings? Let's find out. Hmm, I can see a nice pet cat drinking milk, right? Somebody is feeding milk, milk for this pet cat, right? So that means an animal can stay with us, right? Oh, look who's here. Hi, Dexter. So Dexter is also sitting with you. He's learning, he wants to study about more animals who live in cities and towns. Right, so he's saying yes, he's excited. He's very excited to move to the science class. Yes, 
So let's get started with Dexter. Please open your textbook page number 50 and 51. Lesson number 2 in bright black letters. Sorry, in bold black letters, it's written wildlife in town and city. So today's lesson's name is wildlife in town and city. Please keep your rough copy and pencil, the one, the notes which you were following up with your science class in your previous video. You can continue with the same notes, okay, and move to the next page and you can just write down if you think if just write down some important points of today's lesson okay so can you know i think you know some animals can you name some few animals who we can take care as pets hmm think 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 wow a fish right a fish you can take care of fish as pets but they're very sensitive, so you have to be very careful when you take care of them. So, fish, that's right. Some more, please. Dog. Cat. So, dogs and cats. Right. So, we already know about dogs, cats, fish, right? What about some new animals? Should we learn some new animals today? Yes, so let's learn some more. Wow, can you identify what animal is this? Hmm, it looks like a dog, but it's not a dog. It's a fox. It's an Arabian red fox. So these red fox, I first wanted to show you a picture of Arabian red fox. Though they don't stay in our surroundings, but they stay in Saudi Arabia. They stay in countries like Saudi Arabia, okay, and the Middle Eastern region. So you can find this Arabian red fox in the deserts or in the mountains of, uh, you know, Arabia. So some people also stay there in the mountains. So maybe they can have, a, they might have seen these animals, but certainly not in the cities, okay. So these are the Arabian red fox. Their features are distinctive or different from other other foxes you can see have a close look of this fox okay these are the arabian red fox this is arabian this is an arabian red fox you like i said you find you find them mostly in deserts and mountain regions of arabia so people who are living near the mountains, maybe they must have seen them in the parts of deserts and mountains of Arabia. You can have a close look of this Arabian red fox. Okay. Now these are also foxes and these are called red fox. Now you find these red fox mostly in certain parts of europe that's the united kingdom precisely you can find them in the streets or most uh, in the farms of united kingdom in europe okay and uh, they can survive in towns and cities they can can you see them it's just standing behind a house there so you can find the foxes in europe or in certain parts of europe but these foxes, you cannot find them in Saudi Arabia. We should also know about some towns and city animals, not just in Saudi Arabia, but also around the world, right? So these are the red fox which live in certain parts of United Kingdom. The houses of foxes are called burrows. You can see a hole there. The hole is dug by the foxes so they can stay there. So this is their shelter. So every, like any other living thing, even foxes need a shelter to stay where they can keep themselves protected from any enemies or any conditions, any climatic conditions where they can just take rest basically. What do foxes eat? Foxes can eat on, can you see the pictures there? They can, on the first line you can see a row of animal meat 
and on the second row you can see plant food so they can eat rabbit squirrel fish mice or rat bird meat and they can also eat different kind of fruits and plant uh, plants as well that means if these animals can eat animal meat and plants which is found locally even in towns and cities it's easy for them to survive right so they also don't mind eating the leftover food which is put uh, near the dustbins by the human beings these foxes are usually active in the night you will not find them every day like on the day to day basis so maybe it's new for you that you're like oh my god you can find fox in towns and cities yes you do so you find towns uh, you can find fox and foxes in towns and cities but mostly in the night because they are active in the night so the animals who are active in the night they are called nocturnals which you will be learning in higher levels okay so these animals are active in the night so let's have a quick note on the fox what we studied about foxes today so number 1 foxes live around the world in many diverse habitats that means foxes can live in every region of the world forest mountains and deserts now you would be asking what about snow yes they do live in snow as well those are called arctic foxes so arctic foxes also live in antarctica which is only snow not every animal and birds can stay in antarctica right so they also adapt well that means they can comfortable live in human surroundings number 2 they are great hunters they hunt on rodents rodents are mammals they are also a group of mammals okay like mouse rat squirrels and we will learn more about them rabbits so foxes also hunt on rabbits animals like uh, rabbits birds so their diet is flexible it keeps changing it's nothing it's not the same so they also eat plant food like fruits and vegetables even fish frogs so it's easy for them to live in towns and cities because this food is easily available if not around the house maybe near the dustbins you know like a scrap or a garbage food they can eat this food and that's why it's easy for them to live in towns and cities so that should answer your question how will fox survive in our habitat i hope that answers this question that they can easily survive with us because as any other living thing they need food and that food is plenty in it, it's available in plenty in towns and cities the food which they are looking for is available here right you can just have a close look on the notes you can always pause and make a note of these so can you guess who this animal is so we are done with the foxes now let's move to the new animal what does this new animal look like looks like a mouse yeah it looks like a mouse but it's not a mouse it has little uh, nosy feature of mouse but it's not a mouse it's a hedgehog what is it called a hedgehog so these are spiny mammals mammals are those animals which are which whose brain is more developed than any other animals okay so even we are mammals so we have an ability to think right we have a power to think so just like us the other mammals like these also like hedgehog or fox or elephants you know these are also mammals so these mammals have the power to think they are capa their capacity is higher of uh, they have a higher thinking capacity compared to other animals and their body is covered with skin or fur which protects them from any conditions climatic conditions okay so you can see the spines here yes but you might be thinking that they are very sharp and it's very difficult to touch you know you could get scared to touch right if you look at the spines closely but do you know that they are not stiff they are not sharp so most of the people you know in certain parts in europe or in western countries 
people keep them as pets. So if they keep them as pets, that means they hold them on their hands, in their hands. And that, that, that says that the spines are not sharp and it just looks sharp, but they're not sharp. So it's easy for the human beings to carry. Okay. So why do these animals have the sharp, uh, why do these animals have spines which look sharp? Why do they have the spines? What happens is when these animals, they fear if that there is somebody who is attacking them, they immediately become into a tight ball. They roll into a tight ball. So on the right side, if you can see a picture, you can see that their spines are mostly, mostly used for their defense, that is for their protection. Okay, so <clears throat> a little note on hedgehog. What we know about hedgehog is that they are spiny mammals. We already saw the spines. You can always go back to the video and watch, have a close, like, a close look at those spines. And they are spiny mammals. Note number two, they feed on insects, they can feed on snails, they can also eat berries and melons. That means they eat animal food and plant food. And just like fox, they are also active in night. Okay, so that's why we don't happen to see them. You also have hedgehogs in deserts here, by the way. You can also find them in Saudi Arabia, but not in towns and cities, maybe in the deserts. So these are, those are called desert hedgehogs. Okay, you cannot find them in the day. That's why we don't sight them. We don't see them a lot more, but mostly in the night. Like I said, we can find them in Saudi. You can also find them in countries like Syria, Yemen, Jordan, and also in continents like Europe and New Zealand. They were introduced from New Zealand. Wow. Now, let's, get, let's move to squirrels. So we studied about foxes. We studied about hedgehog. What about the squirrels? We're learning some new animals, right? Like squirrels. We also know that you must be knowing about them. But do you know that they also live in towns and cities? Right. So these are also rodents. Like I said, the rodents are part of mammals. Okay. They keep gnawing. They keep nibbling on the food. Like I can give you some examples on rodents. For example, a squirrel, rats, mouse, hamsters. You know, these are all rodents. You, they have some, their teeth is very distinctive. That's why they are called rodents. The way they gnaw, the, the way they gnaw their food, the way they nibble their food is distinctive. So that's why they are rodents. Okay. So you can see a nice bushy tail of a squirrel, right? And uh, squirrels also have a large family. They also have different groups in their family, like chip chipmunks and flying squirrels, ground squirrels. So this is a ground squirrel that you can see here. Have a close look of the squirrel, which is nibbling on something. And uh, like I said, squirrels are friendly animals. They are rodents. And like I said, they are rodents and they're friendly animals. Okay. They can eat variety of nuts and seeds and they can also eat meat, animal meat, if they are very hungry. But they would always prefer a plant food like nuts and seeds. But if they have no option, they will also eat animal meat. So we don't see a lot of squirrels in Saudi Arabia because they live mostly in trees. And you know Saudi Arabia is a desert region, right? So we don't see a lot of parks, not many parks, you know, you don't see a lot of trees here. Or maybe you can find them in the Cornish or maybe in the footpaths or in the on the roads you can find a lot of trees. But it's Saudi Arabia is mostly a desert region. So squirrels are uh, predominantly found in America. Okay, you find them a lot in America. So if you have visited United States or if you happen to see uh, uh, or read about this country, you will see some beautiful parks in the United States and squirrels make homes in these beautiful parks. So people who come who visit the park for their regular walks or exercise or just to spend some quality time there with nature, they happen to feed them with nuts and take care of them like that, right? So squirrels, they don't get scared of humans, they bond with humans. So that's easy for them to stay in towns and cities because their basic survival, the food, is 
plenty is available in plenty in towns and cities and they can adapt themselves so a little note a small note on squirrels so like i said that squirrels you can find in you know um, almost every region of the world okay but except antarctica the antarctica is covered with snow so not every animal can stay there right can every animal stay there no it's difficult so predominantly you can find squirrels living in trees so if you find a lot of trees a lot of beautiful parks in any country trust me you'll find a lot of squirrels there and they're always nibbling into food another interesting fact about squirrels is they store food for winter they like to keep storing they're very smart in that what they do is they know that you know they can understand when the winter is coming so before the winter comes they start storing their food why do they do that why do they store food because the food which they like to relish on they, they cannot find it in the winter it's very scarce or very rare it's very difficult for them to search food what they enjoy eating okay what's their staple food so what they do is they they try to store their nuts you know which can be stored easily by the way so they keep storing them so it's easy for them to nibble on them in the winter season okay and note number 3 is like i told you i showed you a previous picture of you know a uh, a human being feeding some nut to the squirrel so visitors feed this nutty rodents so it it's a nice bond between a human and an animal right rats and mouse let's move to the to another animal rat and mouse you can see a mouse picture and a rat a rat picture okay so they are not same they are completely different they are different in their size in their features now immediately when you look you would be like oh my god a rat but when you look closely you can actually figure out what is a mouse and what is a rat so they are very different animals okay okay so oh look who's sneaking around here oh it's a rodent what is this can you name it can you name this animal it can be a rat or it can be a mouse but mostly it looks like a mouse to me yes so it can be because mouse are smaller in size so i'm assuming that this should be a mouse yes so when there is any tiny holes in your house or in your surrounding they start they start making a hole there they make their little home there and they start sneaking to your kitchens and if they sniff some good food they start grabbing the food and if they see any human they just grab the food and run back to their holes okay but it's a nuisance to have this rodents in a house believe me because it's very important to take care of your hygiene your cleanliness in the house and if imagine if they if you're eating if you're relishing your nice pizza and you see a mouse jumping on your pizza first of all you would get scared you would scream and run ah you just want to scream and run but otherwise even if it just takes your little food and just bites off your little food and runs away to the hole would you like to eat that pizza again no definitely not so you have to be very careful you have to make sure that you know these tiny holes which this rodents make yeah it has to be covered completely you know make sure that your house is clean and no such animals are entertained in your house okay see what they do can you see this picture they can damage the food stock at home they can just go and nibble down and you know mess the kitchen completely it can be a very messy situation for the mothers in the house because they have to cl clean the kitchen and they have to take care of the house so it's quite a task for them so a little note on rats and mouse like you know other animal like squirrels we do not find rats and mouse in every uh, we do not find them in antarctica because like i said in antarctica you have it's antarctica is covered with snow and they cannot stay there okay and when mice and when the mouse and rat wants you know any food you think they can stay in antarctica where you know they just have to survive on some real, like fish or something i don't think they can survive there they are used to eating different kind of diet food like anything even they can eat garbage the scrap 
anything even like they because like if you go to the note number two like i said they eat garbage so it can be a question why if they are such a problem why are they staying in this world why are they existing in this world right now they are important in our ecosystem now ecosystem means a food chain or a chain of living things okay like a, a chain in the nature so nature consists of plants animals and human beings right so this is a chain of nature so we all have to stay together in peace in harmony right so this is in short i'm trying to explain to you in simple terms what is ecosystem and these animals because they help us to eat garbage so that's why they're living in our ecosystem right somebody has to clear the garbage right so they serve a purpose in our ecosystem by cleaning the garbage by eating the leftover food the garbage food there are many other animals like rats and my uh, mouse who are scavengers they are called scavengers because they eat the garbage food they can eat note number three they will eat anything like i already told you that they eat anything under the sun meat cheese grains you name it so that's why please take care of your favorite cheese please take care of your pizzas your burgers whatever you're eating make sure you once you finish it or you're done with your meal if you have not completed your meal close it on with a with a lid or a less vessel so that you know these kind of insects or rodents don't come and spoil your food okay so we have studied a lot of new animals today like or if you have already known known about these animals you know that they also live in towns and cities so we know some animals like fox hedgehogs squirrels rats and mouse right so we now we are going to learn about birds we cannot forget the birds right they are also part of our environment so what about birds let's find out yeah you can see a cute little sparrow on the left side of the picture right i really like sparrows you know as i wake up thankfully my window is just uh, by the window side i can hear the sparrows chirping in the early morning as i wake up so that makes me feel very positive and energetic i feel good because i feel i'm connected to nature so if you have time you know now that you have a lot of time you can always just sit quietly and try to connect with nature with this chirping sounds you don't have to always be you know on the phone playing games or doing something which is not productive you can connect with nature with this beautiful animals like sparrows you can see a sparrow it's cute looking small sized sparrows so they also feed on grains yeah uh, you know they can they can sip on water so mostly during summer time what you can do is you can keep a bowl of water there for them outside your window so that whenever if they are looking out for water or grains you know maybe you can keep some grains also they can always come by your window side you know just eat or drink and they can fly back so you can you know small actions which you can show that you care for them and on the right side you can see a kite a ki- uh, a kite is completely different from an eagle most of the time people misunderstand that it to be an eagle because you know it looks very similar to an eagle but it's not and kites eat mostly animal meat you can also find these two birds in saudi arabia you can find kites also in uh, usa and south america but you can also find these birds in arabia and sparrows are city birds you can find sparrows in cities mostly in cities they they are lifestyle is completely adapted to the city life and kites you can you know maybe not too many in the cities but you can definitely find them in saudi arabia and uh, other arabic regions and also in south america and also in usa so the kites are mostly smaller in sorry the kites are small in size compared to an eagle and they also eat mostly they are mostly feeding on insects and animal meat like frogs and birds and snakes okay so their claws are very sharp if you have uh, if you have internet you can always google on kites you know nat- national geographic channels and you have some more interesting information about them 
you can look look for more articles on that okay and um, so this was about sparrow and kites and moving on to crows and pigeons so on your left side you can see a black color bird that's called a crow these are also scavenger birds that means can, do you remember what is scavenger birds yes scavenger birds are the ones which eat the scrap food or the garbage food from the dustbins so the crows also are scavenger birds they are black in color and you can find them in cities mostly near the dustbins on the right side you can see a pigeon and pigeons are let me tell you one thing about pigeons they are the most intelligent birds they are one of the most intelligent birds like few years back like in olden days i can say 100 years back these pigeons were like messengers between human beings so if they can understand the signs of the messages of human beings you can understand how smart they are and they can also recognize the tasks or actions or any uh, work given by the human beings to them they will perform these actions accordingly to the human beings so they uh, the pigeons they feed on grains seeds berries insects earthworms and like i said they all easily bond with human beings and they can be wonderful friends a loyal and faithful friend so you keep feeding grains to them they will always come back to you they will always fly back and if you like nature if you like to be surrounded by such birds you will you will have a beautiful life so this is about the pigeons and the crows you know it's a scavenger birds and uh, moving on so we learned some more we got to know some more information about birds today about sparrows those are city birds and kites which eat mostly animal meat crows which are scavenger birds and um we talked about pigeons who are intelligent and connect or bond with human beings okay so a little note about birds now the food habits about the bird is not same for everything now just how you like if you like hamburger i might like pizza so just the same way birds their birds also have their preferences not all the birds eat the same kind of food for example a sparrow can eat feed on grains and worms a kite can whereas a kite can eat uh, you know snakes and frogs so you can see the difference right and scrap like i said scrap food means leftover food or leftover items now on the right side Uh, below you can see a beautiful nest box which human beings build for the uh, birds in western countries even in some countries around the world human beings build this nest boxes for you know uh, birds or squirrels basically this is a home for the birds where you know the uh, the birds can take care of their babies from extreme harsh con- uh, climatic conditions or from their enemies like snakes who can easily eat off their babies the birds eggs so they have to be very careful the the mothers as always they are always protective so even the mother birds and the parent birds are very protective about their babies and that's how they take care okay so these are the small actions which we human beings can do isn't it such a beautiful thing this is how we born with you know the living creatures you can do as much as you can because they are always giving they are never hurting us unless we hurt them so we have to be careful moving on we are going to learn about butterflies butterflies are insects with beautiful wings they have some beautiful wings and you know they have this beautiful colored wings you can see a butterfly here on a flower what is it doing it's feeding on nectar so we had already studied about butterflies in our first term that butterflies lay eggs on leaves and frogs also just like butterflies they do not take care of their babies so you must have seen a lot of butterflies in cornish because cornish has some our cornishes have some beautiful gardens especially in spring time so wherever you see some beautiful gardens or beautiful flowers you know you'll always find butterflies there because they are searching for nectar they feed on nectar 
okay so what did we learn today in textbook page 50 and 51 what did we learn today so we learned new animals or some new information about animals like fox hedgehogs and uh, squirrels rats mouse I, I mean, we could, have, we could have never thought that they can also stay with us in towns and cities. We have always imagined them in jungles, right? Like fox, I would imagine somewhere in deep mountains. But now we know that they can also stay in towns and cities. And number two, we studied about sparrows and squirrels who can make nests in cities. If they can't make it, the human beings can also, they can obviously make it, but Human beings can also make nest boxes and we know that squirrels, you can see them, you know, making homes in beautiful parks. And butterflies, the last third box, you can see the third green box, it says butterflies feed on nectars, they lay eggs on leaves and you can find a lot of butterflies in parks and gardens where you can find beautiful flowers. So... If we have to summarize this lesson, what we understand from this lesson? What did you understand from this lesson, boys and girls? Level one, wake up and please tell me, what did you understand from this lesson? What I understood from this lesson is, and I hope that even you have understood this from the lesson, that the birds and animals, they did not be staying in some deep jungles or forests or oceans or deserts or snow they can stay with us as well like some animals can stay comfortably like human beings in towns and cities and why do they stay in towns and cities just like us even their basic needs are met like food shelter right so if the basic food is met so they can easily survive and they wouldn't harm us unless we don't harm them so we have to make sure that we do not interfere in their life and uh, at the max you know at the least what we can do is we can take care of them by a small little actions by you know just build uh, making a home for them or you can consider some animals as pets only if you are really ready to take that responsibility or you know you can just keep a bowl of water and feed grains for them in your terrace or in balcony or if you have any space where you can see them flying around the birds especially or uh, if you see a street cat you can keep some milk for them or if you have a cat cat or a, da a dog in the house or a fish be careful take care of them and make sure you know they are part of your family just like how your members uh, you know, like your brother or sister, or your mother or father or any extended family is, make sure that, you know, you remember that your plants, your animals, birds, everybody, they are part of a family, a nature's family. We are part of nature and so are they. So my request to you is keep your phones, keep your laptops in one place. Use it only if it is productive. Don't use it for games which will be of no use for you okay so make use of this time learn try to buy some books read books whatever books you have read them your own textbooks have so much information that you can always read them start by reading your own textbooks and you know you can since you have internet not every the whole day maybe you can take one hour time from your parents permission and you know search more about animals plants and human beings in you can uh, search about these animal, um, this species in National Geography. You can log into the National Geography or Animal Planet or Discovery and find out. Sit along with your parents, and you know you can find out more about the nature. Try to connect with nature, and spend most of the time with nature. Go by the window side, sit there and watch the nature, read the nature, listen the na listen to the nature read a book, look at the sky, draw something, you know, look at the sky and write something. All your great creative thoughts can come out from nature itself. So connect with nature and I hope you have understood this lesson. Try to read this lesson from your textbook. Okay. 
and uh, this was the lesson for today textbook page 50 and 51 wildlife in town and city these are few questions which you can find out by yourself okay the first question is put on your thinking cap and the first question why old cans plastics are very dangerous to animals which wildlife would you make home for in your surrounding and why please design its home and question number three what is nectar question number one why old cans plastics we find a lot of plastics in near our dustbins we use it also for our personal use so why does it harm the animals or any other living creatures including us and question number two i want you to use your creative minds and think about your favorite wildlife animal which can make a home in town and cities use your creativity and if you think that this animal could have made a home in town and cities how would it look like and you can design it color it make it look nice beautiful okay and let think and tell me uh, you can uh, just draw it which wildlife would you make home for and the question number three what is nectar i want you to read through your books if you cannot find it in your book go to a search engine google or bing with your parents consent and find out what is nectar and write down the answer in your copies finally we end this lesson today and um, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope you have studied some new lesson, something new today. And as level one teachers, our dear students, we are really proud of you that you are listening, watching, learning from this lessons. Keep up the great work. Okay. Until we meet again, hopefully, inshallah, we meet again. Until then, pray, pray a lot for, uh, to Allah and pray to God. Uh, you know we need prayers at this time pray and keep yourself healthy keep yourself clean eat healthy food and please it's a request to do not waste your time make this make use of this time productively do not waste your time okay learn and make new hobbies and grow thank you so much take care